Northern Israel is right now considered to be one of the most hostile places in the world. With tit-for-tat cross-border strikes between the Israeli army and the Iran-backed militant group Hezbollah based in Lebanon. Since the war between Israel and Hamas in Gaza began last October, Hezbollah, in solidarity with Hamas, has fired thousands of rockets into Israel, while Israeli forces have launched retaliatory strikes, killing senior Hezbollah commanders. <laughs> Civilians such as Mikhail Gabay are caught in the middle. And from the left, you see this army base. Okay. Usually when they aim, they aim to army bases, so... We're stuck in the middle between the no man's land and the army base. So if the rockets are going to hit somewhere, it's going to be somewhere here around this area. Um, so it's not the spot you want to be on. Yeah, that's not the spot that we to. want to be. So maybe we can seriously drive a little bit faster. OK. For months, tens of thousands of civilians in the north have been evacuated to other parts of Israel. The mass evacuation has turned this rich agricultural region into a ghost town. Mr. Gabay is one of the few locals that have stayed behind in the hope of defending their homes and livelihoods. Another is fruit farmer Ido Rontberg. If, I, if we hear a boom... If you hear a boom, we're yeah. over here. What okay. Do we do? If we are here, we need to go down mm -hmm. and then wait the 10 minutes and then go to the shelter. We see that if we go down and do like this, we will be alive. If we stay like this, we will die. Mr. Rontberg's wife and baby have been evacuated to central Israel, but he cannot leave because this farm is his only source of income. We don't stop our lives and go away. We stay here, we walk, we do what we can. It's not about the Muslims and Jewish and Christian. It's not. I, I think most of the Israeli people are mixed with Muslim, Christian, and we're all good with this. It's about the terror, you know, we don't, we don't want terror. I was born into this conflict. One of my first memories as, as a child is my father carrying me, picking me up in, from, from bed in the middle of the night because rockets are coming to Kiryat Shmona. Nitzan Daniel and her family live in Sezold, next to the evacuated town of Kiryat Shimona, Israel's northernmost city. While Miss Daniel's family have chosen to remain despite the dangers, most of their neighbours have fled to safety. Miss Daniel's own childhood was punctuated by two Israel-Lebanon wars in 1982 and 2006. Now, herself a mother, she could never imagine that her own children would be living through that same trauma. This is uh, some kind of a bunker that my son, he's 12, he digged for a couple of days. He just didn't stop digging. And just imagine what this boy is thinking to himself, how, what he needs to do in order to protect his family. It's very, very deep. I'm having conversations with my kids. I never thought that I, I'll, I'll have, like, my younger one is asking me, well, Mom, where do you think I should hide if Hezbollah will come to the kibbutz? Or sometimes I find him sleeping with his toy rifle in his bed. This is not the, the reality or the future that I wanted for my kids. This kibbutz, just 500 metres from the Lebanon border, was established back in 1968 with its core purpose to be the last line of defence. Now, in 2024, the people who live here have become just that. They include Lior Schleff from kibbutz Sneer. He was trained by the military and now works in a civilian defence unit. Since October 7th, we're on a sort of a military unit, which means we have our missions. We're guarding the kibbutz. Like so many northern Israelis I've met, Mr. Schleff has lived through multiple conflicts. In the first Lebanon war in the early 80s, I was a child and I slept for three years in bomb shelter. Unfortunately, what makes me sleep good at night is the fact that my gun is underneath my pillow.
Mr Schleff's three children have been evacuated to central Israel since the war began and he won't let them return until it's over. He's now been here for nearly a year, alone with his dog. As Israel's war with Hamas crosses its one-year mark, the conflict in the north is becoming more serious and more deadly. Israel and Hezbollah continue to trade heavy fire, with Israeli airstrikes killing hundreds of people, including top Hezbollah commanders. Israel is blamed for the highly sophisticated and fatal attacks in Lebanon involving pages and walkie-talkies used by members of the militant group. Israel is promising to change what it calls the security balance in the north. But at the UN General Assembly calls for an end to this showdown before it's too late. Full-scale war is not in anyone's interest. Even if the situation has escalated, a diplomatic solution is still possible. Lebanon is at the brink. The people of Lebanon, the people of Israel, and the people of the world cannot afford Lebanon to become another Gaza. Gidi Harari lives close to the Lebanese border, and like Lior Schleff, he's a volunteer civilian defender. He tells me he is furious about the security situation, a sentiment I've heard many times from other Israelis in the north. It's Mount Dov. The highest part is, is Israel. With those towers on it? Yes. Mm -hmm. So all the parts to the left is Lebanon, and they can shoot from there. It's a wild reality. All right, what have you got growing here? As the conflict wears on, and with most of his friends and neighbours evacuated, Mr Harari has had to find ways to cope with the constant psychological strain. Tending to his garden offers some solace. I'm not speaking. It gives you something to do every morning. And... But what he really wants is the assurance and hope that those who've been displaced can one day safely come home. Almawasi tent camp for displaced Palestinians in southern Gaza, Abir does what she can to maintain an ordinary routine for her family in extraordinary conditions. A year ago, the war between Israel and Hamas reached her neighborhood and changed her family's life forever. <laughs> ناري طبعا حكيت لاولادي ماما انزلوا تحت بيت الدرج فهم بلشوا ضرب بزياده طلبنا سياره واخذنا شويه من اغراضنا وروحنا عند اهلي قعدنا Abir's husband Farid was working outside of Hamas controlled Gaza when the war began and has since been unable to return neither has their daughter Saba who is studying in Egypt Along with her three sons, Abir has been displaced many times throughout the war that began on October 7, 2023. <laughs> More than half of the structures in Gaza have been damaged or destroyed due to the war. Even Al Mawasi, designated a humanitarian zone by the Israel Defense Forces, has suffered multiple attacks by Israel, with its military saying that it was rooting out Hamas fighters embedded in the camp. 
Hamas has denied its operatives were present. Despite efforts to seek shelter, Abir's son Allah says safety is an illusion. This family is separated by just a few dozen kilometres, but in reality, they are a world apart. Abir's husband, Farid, is currently living and working in Israel's southern desert region. His family always on his mind. Farid desperately misses his family and the life they had together before he left Gaza. But he feels things will never be the same again. ساكنين في مكان ريفي في الصداع الغربي في الصداع في خانونس طبعا انت عارف طبيعه الريف هادئ وتطلع من البيت هيك الصبح بدري بتفطر حواليك شجر الزيتون حواليك الورد حواليك شجره النخل للاسف اليوم مع الحرب الحي كله راح هنا في الصوره وانا جالس ما تبقى من المنزل غير كامل بيت يعني هذا التليفون لقيته طاير برا هي كانت تنجاجة طبعا سقف محكم مطبخ على مشكل كامل هنا كان هاي بالمطبخ وهذا فرش عجين كنا نحط فيه الخبوز وهي الطاولة كنا نقعد عليها بالصالون In Al Mawasi, food, water and electricity are scarce after Israel restricted the entry of vital supplies into Gaza. فكامل الصعب يعني بدك تنجا Humanitarian aid is also in short supply, with delivery trucks stuck at the Rafa crossing between Egypt and Gaza after Israel captured and closed it in early May, citing security concerns. حتى عاود اجتماع مع القائل علي الوضع مرهون بالأوضاع في غزة إذا برجع بفتح مع بالرفع من جديد إن شاء الله طبعا أول شيء بدي أعمله بدي أطلع عائلتي برا على طبعا على مصر ونجتمع هناك Like many young Palestinians in Gaza, Allah's education was put on hold when the war broke out. At the time, he was in his fifth year at medical school. While filming with Farid, I spoke to his daughter Saba in Cairo, where she's also studying medicine. Although safe from bullets and bombs, she, like her brother, is deeply anxious about her future and desperate to see her family again. What does your mother tell you when you do manage to talk to her on the phone? Yeah, she, told, she, she tells me uh, every time we miss you, I need to be with you, I want to come to Egypt, I want to see your graduation. والله حكيك بصراحة شيء مؤلم ومتعب إنه يكون الواحد بدون زوجها خاصة أشهد الأولاد تربيتهم صعبة بدون الأب Amid devastation, countless tears and shattered futures, hope remains. ولما أجل ظروف الحرب طبعا خطفت منا أحلامنا وبنتمنى أن يعم السلام عشان نرجع نحقق أحلامنا وما راح يأس وأنا صابر الحمد لله. ما راح يأس أبدا.
stunning, rugged mountains shield what is often a bitter reality on the ground in the occupied West Bank. Palestinian shepherds here say Israeli settlers poison their animals as well as assault, intimidate and forcibly displace them from lands they've lived and worked on for generations. Israel has occupied the West Bank since the 1967 Arab-Israeli War. However, the International Court of Justice has ruled that all Israeli settlements in the West Bank are illegal. Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has rejected the ruling, saying Israelis have the right to live in what they consider their ancestral home. We're in the South Hebron Hills, home to some 4,000 Palestinians from the Shepparton community. Now, they're in a fight for their very existence. Some are facing eviction, others violent settler attacks, which have been on the rise since the war in Gaza began. In the past 11 months, the UN has recorded at least 1,300 settler attacks, including 18 cases in which Palestinians were killed and more than 1,000 reports of damage to Palestinian property. I'm here to see the situation firsthand. 62-year-old Abu Murad was born in the village of Susia. In 1986, he and his family, along with their neighbours, were forced out by government authorities to make way for an Israeli settlement, and they've been prevented from returning. تبعد عن أمه صعب صعب جدا فأنا بعتبر سوسيا أم With limited access to grazing land and water Abu Murad says it's been challenging to earn a living in farming He tells me it's become even more difficult now as Israeli settlers have grown increasingly aggressive since the Israel-Hamas war began last October يعني يعني بس الثلاث ايام هذول كان في يعني اعتداءين ونزلوا علينا ما يقارب 25 20 25 تقريبا وهاجموا بعصي مغطين وجوههم معهم عصي غاز فلفل خنجر دخلوا الغنم بالاراضي الخاصه في مزروعه زيتون ولوز واشياء Palestinians in the occupied West Bank have long accused the Israeli military and police of shielding settlers rather than holding them to account when they commit crimes. In response to such sentiments, Israeli authorities say its troops are in the West Bank to protect the property and the life of all residents and disperse clashes. Nasser Nawaja is a Palestinian farmer, also from Susia. <laughs> He says he's discovered Israeli settlers trespassing on his land again. Accompanied by Israeli activists with video cameras, he's called for help, and both police and the military have shown up. The settlers eventually leave, but Mr. Nawaja says it won't be long until they return. NASA and these activists here say that things are normally very different, but because our camera was here, things didn't escalate into violence this time. It's hard to live with the feelings that are in the future, and you have to go through the future, and you don't know what's going to happen in the future, and you don't know what's going to happen in the future, and this is a hard thing. Mr. Nawaja says discrimination against Palestinians in this region extends to restricting access to basic necessities.
I'm told these trenches have been dug to block Palestinian farmers from grazing livestock on their own land, forcing shepherds to buy feed for their animals, an expense they can scarcely afford. اليوم الاطفال اذا بتطلعوا من حولهم انه بشوفوا قديش المستوطنين عندهم ملاعب عندهم شبكات مياه عندهم كهرباء احنا بعضهم فيش عندنا ميه نسقي اطفالنا مع انه الميه والكهرباء على 50 متر من بيوتنا ما بنقدر نروح Since the Israel Hamas war began activists have uncovered a new development a rapid increase in settler outposts Illegal, even under Israeli law, these are small, hastily constructed shelters that are increasingly linked to violence against Palestinian communities. There were at least 191 outposts in the West Bank by the end of 2023, according to the UN. These include 26 established that year, the largest single-year increase since 1991. Guy Hirschfeld is an Israeli activist trying to stop the spread of settlement outposts and protect Palestinians. What Israel considers outpost, I consider as a terror nest that even by the Israeli law are not official or not official. But again, they are not doing nothing to take them out. Mr. Hirschfeld and other activists view these outposts as a way for Israeli settlers to seize more Palestinian land as they're often retroactively legalized by the Israeli government. The United States and other countries have issued sanctions against extremist settlers and multiple West Bank outposts, calling them counterproductive to peace. Actions or announcements seeking to expand outposts will only move um, the goal of peace and stability in the region further away. It's a war of attrition that's being waged on this terrain, a persistent squeeze on the livelihoods of the people here. It's slowly, slowly to make them miserable enough to pack and live. But where Palestinian shepherds can go in this increasingly restricted and hostile environment remains uncertain.